Pro Wrestling Bits. Subscribe now. We've had a couple conversations over the phone, you know, um, I think back in your WWE days and even during the pandemic, I think uh, like shortly after that transitional period, but it's good to do this in person, man. No, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, this is, uh, I'm pumped, I'm pumped. Yeah, man. I, I actually, I attended the New Japan Resurgence show earlier, a couple months ago, actually. It was right here in LA, and I was very excited to see you. You were in a 10-man tag team match, and you guys tore the house down. Really fun. Uh, you, you seemed re-energized. You know, I was particularly paying attention to you, and you did seem re-energized. So just talk to me about how, like, working with New Japan compares to the other promotions that you've worked with in the years. Uh, yeah, first and foremost, you know, New Japan is such an incredible place. Um, you know, the history alone um, and, and the amount of respect that it has from the viewers, you know, people that are fans and people who are wrestlers. I feel like New Japan just has that aura about it that, um, you know, everybody wants to be there because it's, it's so respected and the wrestlers that are there are there for a reason. Um, and I'm so glad that I'm there. Um, you know, I think, I think that I was always supposed to be in, in New Japan. At least I always wanted to be in, in New Japan. I remember saying to myself when I first started training, um, back at MCW, uh, that I wanted to be in New Japan before I was in WWE, but I just so happened to make it to WWE first. But, um, you know, when I got, when I got released from WWE, uh, and New Japan had reached out to me, um. I was, I was so excited. I was like, this is, this is that push that I needed. Um, because again, this was somewhere that I've always wanted to be. Um, and it has such a real, real life sport and competitive aspect to it. And that's, that's where I come from. I, you know, I was a two-time All-American amateur wrestler, I uh, played football, played basketball, baseball, um, so I just have a very competitive uh, spirit uh, and nature about me. So I'm I'm glad that I'm that I'm there. And this, uh, you know, the, the the people there respect just as much as we have respect for New Japan. I feel like they have respect for their fans and and everybody that's a part of it, from the staff, uh, from the crew to the fans to the wrestlers, everybody. Yeah, and one thing that the fans really love in terms of New Japan is going on right now, the G1. I'm assuming that's a bucket list item for you, that maybe when things open back up fully, when we're able to travel back and forth, that doing the New Japan G1 would be an item that you would be interested in doing. Of course, yeah, I would love I would love to, to be a part of that. I would love to be a part of anything and everything that New Japan is doing, um, you know, regardless of what what weight class, you know, if I'm a junior, I want to do the, the, the best of super juniors. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if I'm uh, if I'm here in the States, I want to do the Super J Cup. If I if I'm, you know, out over in Japan and they, they feel as if I can go with some of, you know, their bigger uh, size talent like an Okada, like a um, like a Nagato, like uh, anybody, you know, I want to be a part of the G1. Uh, so, yeah, I, I want to do any and everything. I think I think um, I'm on a mission right now. <laughs> And I'm hungry. I'm hungry, dude. I'm, I haven't been this um, this motivated to uh, to just succeed and uh, progress within the wrestling world um, since I started training. So I'm, I'm ready. I'd love to hear that, man. And I can really tell that you seem a lot more motivated in terms of this version uh, because you did retire uh, right shortly before or maybe a little after signing with AEW a few months back. It was a shoulder injury that was plaguing you. But just based on some recent comments you've made, I feel like that was just as much a mental decision as it was a physical decision based on how outspoken you've been about mental health. Would it be accurate to say something like that? Of course, of course. And, you know, I've always been super open about my... Uh my struggles with, uh, with my mental health. And um, I, that was such a hard decision to make um, because I love wrestling. Um, you know, I dedicated my entire life to it um, to get to where I am today. So to, to make that decision uh, was rough, uh, especially after I got released from, from WWE. And I don't want to keep bringing up, you know, the release, but it, played a huge role, it played a huge part. You know, when that happened, uh, I had to reevaluate my entire life and I didn't even realize that, <laughs> that I um, that I would have had to do that. You know, I spent my entire life, you know, saying, I want to make it to WWE, I want to make it to WWE. Um, 
and when I did that, I uh, accomplished the things that I that I accomplished. And uh, when I got released, I was like, well, shit, now what? <laughs> and, uh, you know, it hit me, it hit me. Um, but I got the opportunity with New Japan. I got the opportunity for AEW. And, you know, during the time, you know, that was a stressful time for everybody. But, for you know, for me, um, you know, I was already going through some personal, some personal life things that, uh, that played a huge factor. And, you, you know, I opened up in an interview um, recently about, uh, my personal life kind of taking a turn for the worse. And I saw the trajectory in which I was going within my career. And I just wasn't willing to uh, jeopardize or sacrifice my family anymore. Um, when I started wrestling, I was 17 years old. Uh, I was moving at such a fast pace. I didn't look back. Um, I didn't even realize what was surrounding me. You know, my focus was just forward the entire time. And, um, you know, during that time, I, I spent a lot of time away from my kids. Uh, I had my first kid when I was 18 years old. I had my second, my uh, my second child when I was within WWE, and that schedule is hectic on its own. So I definitely wasn't home as much. And then, um, you know, during the pandemic, I had my third, my third boy, uh, and I felt like, I felt like, I was, I was, I was super unhappy uh, just because. I've always wanted to be a good dad. I've always wanted to be a good husband. I wanted to be there. Um, I wanted to be active in their life, in their lives every day. Um, and that that just wasn't the case. Um, and uh, it was killing me. And it, it just it literally came down to the point of, you know, my, my family or my career. And that's, that's what I was looking at. And at the time, during that time, I chose my family. Um, and the reason why I came back, which is funny, the, the reason why I retired is now the reason why I'm coming back. You know, I'm doing this for my, my boys. I'm doing this for my wife. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to not only make history, but I'm trying to, you know, put my family in a better uh, situation, you know, financially, because, you know, my, you know, my life wasn't the worst, but it wasn't the best. Uh, you know, growing up in Atlanta, growing up in Southeast D.C., um, you know, having friends who, who died, you know, as teenagers, having uh, people, uh, you know, not really believe in me. So I decided to believe in myself. I'm a very self-motivated person. Uh, and um, my reasons for doing what I'm doing is my family. And that's why I'm doing it. Uh, that's great. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's awesome. And, you know, I want to know from you, do you feel like the wrestling industry has made the appropriate strides in terms of how it views mental health? Because the pro wrestling industry, ego driven, a lot of machismo and mental health is something that's been taboo recently. And you know, I think until recently, like in the last couple of years. So even when it comes to AEW, have you seen these changes implemented in how they view mental health? Oh, yeah, it's, it's super important. You've been, um, I think once the pandemic happened, uh, it was talked about a lot, not even within wrestling, but just in the world. Uh, mental health was brought up a lot. Um, and I think that that definitely helped. I don't, I don't think that it's lacking uh, within the wrestling world as far as, you know, um, bringing awareness to it or, mm -hmm. or treating it as such and, 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 and helping out their talent and stuff like that. Um, I don't even think I said this in the interview, but, you know, when I was in WWE, um, you know, they were paying for my therapy. I was going to therapy every, every single day. Um, you know, uh, during my time in NXT and, 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 and somewhat during 205 Live until my schedule just didn't allow for it anymore when I was on the road for Monday Night Raw. But um, I think that that was pretty cool that they, uh, they took it, you know, that seriously and they were willing to help me um, with that and, uh, and get better. Um, I definitely think it's an important topic, especially within the world of wrestling um you know trying to portray these larger than life characters and somehow and sometimes um having that that blurred line of what's real and what's not and uh certain characteristics and personality traits that you know fans might think is actually that person that might not be um uh, you know, I think sometimes, you know, fans forget that we're humans too. We go through the same things that, you know, they go through. Um, but yeah, you know, I don't, I don't think that wrestling as a whole needs to put more awareness uh, to it. I mean, it would be great. It would be, it would be amazing, but I think they're doing a pretty good job already. Um, I think it, it, it takes 
you know, people like myself um, and everyone else, you know, going through mental health um, within the world of wrestling to, to speak up and, and share their stories and, and um, you know, just continue to be that, that motivational and, and driving force for anybody else that's going through situations, so. Now, now, one show, I got into a lot of shows during the pandemic, and one show that I actually really got into was The Challenge, and I was pleasantly surprised to see you on The Challenge. I had no idea that you'd be on there. Um, you did have to leave a little early, but I did enjoy your time on The Challenge, and I was thinking while watching this, um, because Challenge is so popular with women, and I think that's somewhere that wrestling can stand to benefit, is gaining more of a, a female audience. Is there any wrestlers that you feel would be good on The Challenge, whether it's athletically or whether it was some appealing to women or whatnot, that that you feel that they can maybe take from the wrestling industry in putting people on the challenge? Man, I think I it's so hard to pinpoint one person because, you know, everybody, we all have such different personalities uh, and they're out there. <laughs> um, yeah. you know, uh, and I, and, and we're, you know, I, I think we're some of the, the, the best athletes in the world, um, just the skill level that it takes to be able to do what we're doing. Um, you know, it doesn't just take being strong. It doesn't just take being quick. It doesn't just take being, uh, you know, coordinated. It, it takes so much, um, you know, there's a lot of mental things that go into it too. And I think uh, we, we have to juggle a lot as professional wrestlers um, to be able to pull off what we're pulling off. Uh, but I think, I, I think more wrestlers need to be a part of reality TV shows. Yes. Um, <laughs> because I think we can we can attract a certain crowd, you know, we can pinpoint what it is exactly we're trying to get out of someone. Um, and I think that that makes for good TV. I think that we're, we're already used to, you know, storylines and we're already used to the drama and we're already used to uh, the political game uh, and, and the physicality too. So um, yeah, it's hard to pinpoint, it's hard to pinpoint one person, but if I had to pinpoint somebody, I'll pinpoint myself because I want to yeah. go back. <laughs> yeah, I want to see you back on there. And I completely yeah. agree that pro wrestling and that skill set fits up perfectly with the challenge from the athleticism to the politics to the character, which I think is the most important in terms of being able to portray yourself with the volume turned up, as they like to say. And yeah, I like that the challenge kind of takes from different reality shows, but I do think that the wrestling industry should be another thing that they use in order to promote and cross promote when it comes to wrestling. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that that would be uh, an amazing idea. I think that definitely. Yeah. Now, you, your first big break, like real big break on the main roster in WWE was with Bobby Lashley. I thought you were great as his mouthpiece with the you know, microphone and chanting his name. And he went on to become WWE champion. So what was your reaction to seeing the ascent of Bobby Lashley? And he continues to do big things in WWE. It was amazing. I remember I, I posted a video when he won the title. Uh, um, I think it was in here, actually. <laughs> Me doing the, uh, the, the whole Lashley chant. Um, I, I think I, I had to do it <laughs> because, uh, you know, I, I think that the way that I was taken off of, of TV, I think it left a lot of people confused and, and wondering what was going on. And um, I w I'm not going to say that I solely, uh, you know, helped push Bobby's career because obviously everything is a team effort. Um, you know, even the stuff that MVP uh, was doing with him. Um, I think we've all played a, a pretty cool role in his career that has, that has put him to where he, he wanted to be, um, which was, was, was WWE champion. I was so happy for him. I was so proud of him. You know, I, um, you know, even though I was a fan of his uh, when I was younger, I think, being able to work with someone uh, that closely uh, week by week, um, we we developed this 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 close relationship that that wasn't on camera, and I think that it was it was just such a cool feeling because I knew that that's where he wanted to be. I knew that's what we were uh, pushing for. I knew that that's the the route that we were trying to take when we were working together. Um, was to be at that top spot. And I'm glad that he made it there, regardless if I was there or, or not. I'm glad that he that he's there um, and that he's continuing to, uh, to to make waves, whether he's the champ or not. I think it woke a lot of people up. And I think um, I think he's in the position that he's he should have always been in. Yeah, and I think that you should absolutely, at the very least, take an assist in having a 
played a part in this process of his ascent because oh, yeah, I think after they saw how magical it was to have a manager like yourself, then they insisted on always having a manager with Bobby Lashley. And I think you were a big part in opening their eyes to just unlock potential that I think everybody knew Bobby had. But once they teamed you two together, it's like, oh, wow. Okay, so this guy, when he has a mouthpiece, is a whole package. No, thank you. I, I never like taking credit for, 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 for anything because even with me, even if that was true of me being able to be that person for Bobby, you know, somebody taught me, somebody showed me the rope. So, so I got to thank the people who, who helped me to help Bobby. So it, it, it's always a team effort. I'm just glad. I'm just happy for him. And I'm, and I'm glad. They it, yeah. Speaking of team effort, you're now paying it forward and partnering with Dante Martin in AEW, which <laughs> I think is perfect. A match made in heaven in terms of just how dynamic of a talker you are. Obviously one of the best athletes in the world now teaming with Dante Martin, who has nothing but promise and potential. We've actually seen it in terms of how great he is in the ring. So how did this come about in terms of you with Dante Martin? Is this something you pitched? Is this something that was pitched to you? Uh, how did that come about? Uh, I've always had my interest in uh, in working with with Dante. Um, uh, funny enough, I actually met his brother uh, when I was in Ring of Honor, and he nice. went to a show as a fan uh, when he was a teenager, and we took a picture and everything. Uh, so it it is pretty cool that it that has come you know full circle, and I'm able to work with Dante uh, named AEW. You know, I see so much of uh, myself in him when I was his age. And he is even better than I was when I was his age. So I think, you know, I didn't really have, you know, I had help when I was younger uh, in, the, in, the, in the business, but I didn't have someone, you know, coaching me and, and taking me step by step and telling me what their experience was and how this can be applied to make this work and stuff like that. So. Um, I'm glad that I can be that person for Dante um, as early as he is within his career. Um, you know, athletically, he, he's amazing. Uh, I, I can't, I kind of can't believe it. It's, it's insane uh, how athletic and talented he is. Um, and I think, you know, just as much as I can help him, I think he can help me too. You know, he's, he's pushing me. He's, you know, I got to keep up with, you know, I used to be the young guy in all the locker rooms. <laughs> And, um, and now I'm at a point where there's this younger stream of like talent who have kind of like looked up to me in a way. And I think that's so cool. Um, and yeah, I, I just want to, I want to, I want to teach these guys. I want to be a part of their careers. I want to, um, you know, I want to show them that it, that it is possible. Um, because I've done it and I want them to do it too. So um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to work with Dante and I'm excited to be in AEW. Yeah, you reference his brother Darius, who's currently out with injury, but on the men, hopefully within the next couple of months, he can be back. And AEW does a good job with a lot of these groups and six man tags and just the potential. Me thinking when I saw you with Dante, I was thinking, man, when Darius gets back, it could be Dante, Darius, and Leo as a trio. Is that something that's in the card? Because, you know, don't play with me, Leo. That's getting me real excited <laughs> in terms of how great that trio could be. No, I never count anything out. Anything is, any and everything is possible. Um, and that, I mean, that's definitely an exciting, uh, an exciting idea. Um, something that is, a is a huge possibility whenever, you know, there is comes back and he's all healed up, you know, who knows, who knows what's gonna, what's gonna happen, uh, within that time. Uh, but if it, if, if, if it goes the way that, you know, you're wanting it to go, and I'm sure a lot of other people who are watching it currently, um, no, I think that that would be pretty cool to have all three of us together. That would be, that would be pretty dope. Yeah, I mean, that'd be, have you guys thought of a potential name? Are there any suggestions? Has this already wheels turning or are you trying not to get ahead of yourself here? No, I'm not trying to get ahead <laughs> of myself. Uh, I'm not trying to get ahead of myself, but um, yeah, 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 yeah. I would have, you, made, you made me start thinking now. <laughs> now the trio's name, so uh, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, that'd be great. And, and so you're doing this LBO Leo, and I really like the uniqueness of you're doing stocks, like specifically because I think wrestling stops short of explaining why a lot of these wrestlers get rich. They have a lot of great, you know, million dollar man, JBL, whatnot, but you're LBO Leo, and you specifically talk about stocks and investments. So is this something that is a real life passion of yours? How, how is this coming about? 
Oh, I'm always investing. I'm always, uh, my interest in, in investing and investment is always there. Um, you know, whether it's investing in other things or investing in myself, um, you know, I'm always trying to move forward and do better and grow. Um, so no, yeah, uh, anything that I do is always an extension of me in some capacity, you know, even the stuff that I did uh, when I was a manager. Um, that loud, brash <laughs> kind of person, that comedic factor about me, like that's that's in me. And I'm not always like that. You know, I'm a pretty cool, calm and collective kind of person. Um, I don't really talk that much. I, I think that I'm a I'm an introvert. Um, but but um, yeah, it's it's exciting to be able to just show people different layers of me. Um, because I don't want to be one dimensional. I never want it to be. Um, so it, it's, it's cool. It's cool that I'm able to do this. It's cool that, um, I'm able to, uh, uh, talk about money cause I like money. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, it's a fun character. It's a fun, it's a, it's, it's pretty fun. I'm, I'm going to have a lot of fun doing it. Now, uh, as much as I do like AEW and enjoy it, uh, one criticism I have had is the lack of black wrestlers at the top of the AEW card. And, and I wanted to know, how long do you think until we see a black world champion? And I know you're a confident guy. Do you think Leo Rush could be that guy? It's almost about that time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah, but seriously, in all seriousness, um, it, it, it is... Uh, it's frustrating to see from me. Um, just because that 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 representation, uh, you know, it changes lives. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I didn't have too many good examples of someone who can set the blueprint for somebody like me. You know, they're at the, you know, at the time when I was a wrestling fan, there wasn't a short, black, tattooed, dreadhead <laughs> guy who likes music from DC. So, you know, the, the path that I was going, I was creating. Um, and I think that, uh, I think, I think that that has opened up doors for, for a lot of people, but, but, um, yeah, I want to be. I want to be a world champion. I think. I think. I think I'm more than capable. I'm more than capable. I'm more than capable. And and that's not me saying that in a cocky way. Like you said, I'm. I'm a believer in myself. I, I know my capabilities. I know what I can do and, and and not do. And if I'm not ready for something, I will say that I'm not ready for something. Um, but I'm ready. I, I've been ready. Um, and I want to take that step. I wanna. I want to. I want to be uh, that guy um, that everybody is looking at and says, man, he did it. And he did it through the face of adversity because I've had some ups and downs in my career. Uh, and um, I, I've showed time and time again that I'm not someone who's just going to lay down and, and give up on my passion and my dreams. Um, and I think that that's a good role model just in life, um, you know, wrestling aside, I think. I think uh, to see someone like myself um, move the way that I'm moving in life um, and inspiring people who look like me uh, is, is a beautiful thing. And I wanna be that, I, I want to be that for, for everybody. And I think that I can be that. Um, I think that I have the, the mic skills. I think that I, I have the, the in-ring capabilities. I think that, that um, I'm, a, I'm a pretty personable, <laughs> like likable uh, person. Um, and I think I'm real. I think I'm honest. I think I'm, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's, this is, this is a mirror. This is a glass panel right here. Um, I don't hold anything back. And, um, I think that that's, that's what a champion is. And I want to be the first, I want to be the first, uh, I want to be the first African-American, uh, world champion in AEW. And that'd be great. And I completely agree with you. I feel like the LBO Leo character is great and it's the icing on top. But in addition to that, you have a fantastic real life story that we've kind of gone through here uh, in terms of you overcoming mental health struggles. And there are so many dimensions that you can project to inspire people um, with representation and through mental health and through a positive message of investment like you were talking about that I do think those are all the ingredients for uh, you know the first black world champion to be. Incredible. Hey man, I'm trying to make it on that uh, 30 and the 30 list so we go. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna keep you on the byline and then hopefully one day you'll get on the 30 and 30. <laughs> yep, yep. 
<laughs> the final question. Uh, so this week in New Japan, you're going to be wrestling Phantasma, I believe, this Sunday. Have you worked together before? Uh, we have. Uh, right at the beginning of uh, my time in, in New Japan for the Super J Cup, um, I met him in that first round. Um, and I also was in a tag team match uh, opposite of him, of course, with uh, Bullet Club. But yeah, I've been in the ring with him a couple of times. Uh, he, he's, he's all right. No. He's <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think you guys have potential to to steal the show, and because I mean I think he's phenomenal. I think the word underrated gets thrown around a lot in the wrestling community, and I do think he's legitimately underrated in terms of when people are talking about some of the best. And I think you and him together I could make magic. No, yeah, he's um he he he's really good. He's really good. Uh, and when I met him, I didn't realize how long he's been in the business, but um you can tell he's super polished. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's talking about um and uh yeah super talented um you know you always want to be in a ring with, with somebody of his skill level um and i'm looking forward to it again this sunday in, in philly so absolutely that's gonna be a lot of fun at the 2300 arena the old ecw arena that's gonna be a, a great show always great crowds there looking forward to seeing you not only in new japan but aew and doing your thing all around the world uh, always great talking to you leo um and i hope to talk to you again soon no, definitely. Same, man. Thank you so much for this for this interview. I really appreciate it. Anytime, man.